Throughout this presentation, we will be discussing the mixed methods designs of research. This presentation was made possible through the work of Lauren Estes, Chelsea Habner, and Caitlin Oconis. Let us begin by clarifying what mixed method research is. It's a research procedure that utilizes both qualitative and quantitative methods. As such, it is vital that before using a mixed method research, you have a clear understanding of the two methods that it's actually mixing. Why use this method? The assumption is that by combining the two methods together, the research would provide a better insight, understanding, and picture of the problem being researched than by using simply one. It is important to note that this method is more time consuming, not only because you are conducting two types of research, but because it's not simply collecting and analyzing two different strands of research, qualitative and quantitative. It consists of merging, connecting, building, and embedding the data together. So, when speaking of mixed method research, understand they are truly mixed. It's interesting to note as well that mixed method research is increasingly being published in scholarly literature. So, when do you choose con to conduct a mixed method study? We've already discussed the benefit of using mixed method research when using qualitative and quantitative together produces stronger results than using them independently. You can also use them if this process you want to build on the strengths of both methods. Specific numbers show trends in quantitative data and responsive real people provide qualitative research. Another way to look at it is utilizing the outcomes of the study, such as the quantitative data alongside the process of the study, which is the qualitative data. Together, they can paint a more thorough and complete picture. Furthermore, when one type of research isn't enough, mixed methods research allows the researcher to elaborate or extend on their findings. Mixed method research could be used to provide alternative perspectives to a study. Some examples of this include when, a, when someone asks for the numbers and the stories. You can utilize qualitative data when you want to provide further understanding on how the experimental intervention actually worked in order to provide insight behind the outcomes of your quantitative data. Some of the earliest research done using mixed method research was done by Campbell and Fisk in their 1959 study, Convergent Indiscriminate Validation of the Multi-Trait Multi-Method Matrix. They developed the MMTM in order to compare multiple variables by testing them in multiple methods and analyzing how the variables are related. The chart pictured is from Campbell and Fisk 1959 study. The variables in this case, in the variables, in this case personality traits, were compared against three different collections of data, self ratings, self staff ratings, and teammate ratings. The results from this collection of data were then compared to one another in the matrix format in order to find similarities. Though Campbell and Fisk pioneered this method, they were still only using quantitative data. Soon after, researchers were looking for ways to integrate qualitative data into their study. Sieber then suggested the combination of case studies with surveys as a way to supplement the quantitative data with qualitative data. In 1979, JIT conducted a survey to understand the effects of, business, of a business merger would have on its employees. He stated that in previous studies, stress was measured in multiple ways such as observation, individual interview, interview of others who interacted with the individual, or physical examination. Each method has its pros and cons, so why not use all methods to determine the strengths of each? This process is known as triangulation. To understand triangulation, picture a triangle with two sources of data as two of the points and the phenomenon as the third. With triangulation, researchers can balance the weaknesses of one method of data collection with the strengths of the other. After JIC's study was published, questions arose as to whether it made sense to combine quantitative and qualitative data. According to many researchers, each type of data collection has its own worldview, meaning that each type of data draws on different assumptions. Quantitative research focuses on the numbers and objective collection of information, while qualitative research relies on the bias and the viewpoint of the researcher. Researchers questioned how these two data sets could truly work together. Proponents of mixed method research suggested that there's a two-stage method so that data could be collected separately as opposed to simultaneously. 
Soon after, other ideas and methods for integrating qualitative and quantitative were shared and multiple research designs developed. These debates and sharing of ideas occurred throughout the 1980s and 1990s. Today, there are six major methods of mixed method design research, all of which will be explained in this presentation. Now, Creswell suggests, mixed method research is in a reflective period, which has lasted for about five to seven years, as the mixed methods designs expand to outside of education and to other countries. More challenges have arisen and discussions continue around best practices. Before diving into the individual types of mixed method designs, how can we determine if any of the designs have been used in a study? If you're looking at a study and want to identify if a mixed method design had been used, here are a few key questions to ask. First, is if there's evidence available in the title of the study. The presence of both quantitative, the words quantitative, and the word qualitative in the study may be an indicator, but terms such as integrated, triangulated, or combined are also easy ways to identify if two types of data have been utilized in the study. The second question is to ask if evidence is available in the data collection section. In a mixed method study, both qualitative and quantitative data are used to understand a research problem. If processes are outlined for a collection of both quantitative and qualitative, then the study is using mixed method design. Third, the reader can ask if there's any evidence of the purpose statement or research questions. Does the researcher indicate an intent to collect both quantitative and qualitative? To determine if which individual type of mixed method design is being used, there's a second set of questions to ask. First, what is the intent of the study? Is the researcher looking to compare data, validate one with the other, or gain more complete understanding of a problem? If so, the de design is likely convergent. Is the researcher looking to have one set of data explained over the other, or build off the data for no new information? If this is true, it is most likely an exploratory or an explanatory sequential design. Another intent may be to embed a set of data in a larger theory or experiment, which means it is one of the advanced designs, which will all be further explained. Mixed method designs are broken down into two categories, basic and advanced. According to Creswell, basic advanced or excuse me, basic designs are considered to be at the heart of mixed method designs. Once a basic design is encased into a larger theory, experiment, or social justice orientation, it becomes an advanced design. So what are the six types of mixed method designs? The first is a convergent design. The purpose of a convergent design is to simultaneously collect both qualitative and quantitative data and merge the data sets, and then explain any discrepancies between the two. The idea here is that by collecting both, the weaknesses of each will be offset by the strengths of the other. In short, the qualitative data, also known as closed-ended data, and the qualitative data, or open-ended data, can be used to check one another. For example, collecting statistics from a large group may help to offset the interviews that you only conducted with a few people. Likewise, observing people for a long period of time offers a much greater detail for a study than simply studying them with a survey alone. These two are used to offset, complement, and further explain one another. Within a convergent study, the researcher collects both qualitative and quantitative data separately and simultaneously, and then analyzes them separately. From there, the researcher is able to compare the two data sets and draw conclusions about how the two support one another or how they diverge. This form of study supplies equal priority to both quantitative and qualitative and uses each to the same degree. A strength of this is that it combines the best attributes of qualitative and quantitative. The difficulty with this specific design is that it's sometimes difficult to merge the two and explain how the findings are without further study. Next we have the expl explanatory design also referred to commonly as the two-phase model. It is the most popular design in educational research. The first step is to collect quantitative data, followed by the collection of qualitative data, which helps to elaborate on the quantitative results. Therefore, the priority is placed on the collection and analysis of quantitative data, with the qualitative data playing a supporting role. 
Though not related to education, the research example, Study and Impact of Chronic Pain and Family Resistance, perfectly highlights the order in which the explanatory sequential design takes place. The first step in this study was to distribute and collect surveys from family members of those with chronic pain. Family members used responses that could be easily quantified and sorted, such as I disagree, slightly agree, um, agree, or slightly disagree. Afterwards, the same individuals were asked a series of interview questions to elaborate on their own personal experiences. These interviews were used to explain and support the quantitative data collected from the surveys in order to draw a conclusion. Next, and similar to the explanatory sequential design, is the exploratory sequential design, which is also a two-phase model. Instead of collecting quantitative data first, however, the researcher begins with qualitative data collection. This allows the researcher to connect interviews and or observations and fully understand the problem before developing the parameters for the quantitative data collection. In an exploratory design, quantitative data is emphasized first. The intent intent of the research is often to explore a phenomenon or a theme, or to design an instrument to be tested. The qualitative data is often collected from a small number of individuals to give the researcher a sense of the problem, followed by quantitative data collection, such as a survey, for a larger group of individuals. Number four is the experimental design. In an experimental design, the researcher adds qualitative data to an experiment at its inception, in the middle, or at the conclusion of a study. This data is meant to provide further information on things like the participant's experience, alongside the data collected within the study itself. Within an experimental design, both forms of data are collected concurrently, concurrently and sequentially. The basic design of the study may be convergent, explanatory, or exploratory, or any combination thereof. The key here lies in how the second form of data is collected and why it is collected. In experimental design, the additional form of study is used to provide additional explanation or information that was perhaps not provided or made clear in the initial form of data collection. The secondary form of collection is used to address a different question than was originally addressed. This form of study gives priority to the original form of study, which is usually quantitative, and then supplements the findings with the supporting form of research, which is usually qualitative in, na in nature. This form of study combines advantages of both qualitative and quantitative studies. Also, the experimental design allows the researcher to collect qualitative data while emphasizing the quantitative approach in its entirety. It's challenging to make sure, the difficulty with this kind of study is that it's challenging to make sure that you are clear about the intent of the secondary form of study. And because the data are addressing different questions, it can be difficult to compare the results. Moreover, it can be suggested that interview, introducing a qualitative data collection in the middle of a study could actually influence the results of your quantitative data. Number five, the social justice design. The purpose of a social justice design is to create change within society and seek to address injustices that exist within that society. The social justice design is also used and called the transformative design because the purpose is to transform society. It is research that is conducted in order to bring about positive social change. So the studies often end with calls for reforming society. Social justice design conducts either a convergent, exploratory, or explanatory study in order to address a social justice concern. The research, the research uses a framework, such as a feminist perspective or a racial perspective, in order to shape the aspects of the study through the lens of that social issue. At the conclusion of the study, the researcher will call for a form of action for the group that was studied. An example of the study would be using young Native American women and their perceptions of STEM programs. This study would illustrate not only what it's like to be a woman as it relates to STEM, but also to be a minority Native American as it relates to STEM. The researchers could conduct a survey to quantitatively understand initial attitudes towards STEM, followed by a qualitative focus group to assess overall feelings towards STEM as well as previous experiences. 
The researchers could conclude the study with a call to action in order to make STEM programs more attractive and more accessible to this underserved population. Strength of this the social justice design is that it's very value-based and it's very ideological. A weakness is that researchers are still learning how to use this form of design as a mixed method study. The last design is the multi-stage evolution design. This design is utilized when the impact of a problem or pro project is sought out. This design builds on the basics of the previous designs and adds to them through multiple stages of projects that are conducted over time. Within this design, there are four distinct stages. The first stage is the need to begin with a needs assessment. Second stage is the development of theory or conceptualization. The third is the design of an instrument. And lastly, the testing of a program. With any design, there are unique challenges. With the multi-stage evolution design, there are three that are important to discuss. For this type of design, you require a team who can work together comfortably, even though there is a diverse method of orientations. Members of this team must be able to clearly identify stages that help address a larger problem objective, ensuring that each stage provides insight to re the researchers need large scale research experience. The last challenge is to be able to ensure that all stages link together. The stages must be interrelated as they build on each other throughout the study. There are seven key characteristics of mi mixed method designs that set them apart from others. Number one, collect and analyze qualitative and quantitative data. In mixed method studies, there are multiple forms of research conducted. This allows the researcher to con collect data typically associated with numeric values, as well as data typically associated with text or images. Crestwell notes that quantitative data researchers are in the background, and their own personal biases and interpretations are seldom discussed. Qualitative researchers make up for this weakness. On the other hand, qualitative research is seen as deficient because of the personal interpretations made by the researcher. The combination of both approaches can offset the weaknesses of the other by, rather than used by itself. Number two, the rigorous data. Use rigorous data. Those these studies combine multiple forms of research, each are done well with depth. Both are quantitative. Both the qualitative and quantitative data methodologies should incorporate sampling, recruitment, varying forms of data collection, analysis, and implementation with stakeholders. Number three, integration. Mixed method research allows the researcher to combine and integrate the data collected from both forms of collection. This can occur through merging the data, such as displaying information on a table, connecting the data, such as in the explanatory design, previously discussed, the data can build on one another, such as in the exploratory design, or the data may be embedded within one another data set, as seen in an experimental design. Number four, use a specific mixed design. The researcher has several methodologies to choose from, and by using one of the many mixed method designs, the researcher is able to select methodology most form fit to their research needs. Number five, frame the study with philosophy or theory. Using theory is a very popular in mixed methods research. Researchers can use social justice theories or social, as part of their research or as the lens that they conduct their research through. There are also other contributing characteristics to be used. Priority indicates that the research places more emphasis on one type of research over another. This could be because one is preferred by the researcher or that there is a need to understand one before analyzing the other. This is also referred to as emphasis of approaches. Sequence. Sequence is the, concur is the use of concurrent, or at the same time, sequential, one after the other, or some combination of the two. Sequence is all may be altered in order to further define the results, such as in sequential, or to gather varying forms of data at the same time, such as in concurrent, in order to compare them at the conclusion of the study. This has also been called temporal orientation. Diagram and procedures. Providing a diagram or visualization of the design, such as diagrams within this presentation, allows the audience to understand what design is used, what type of research is conducted, and what sequence they are conducted in. 
The ethical issue in a mixed method research, because it encompasses both qualitative and quantitative forms of research, has ethical issues associated with each of these methodologies. For instance, according to Cresswell, qualitative is questioned ethically on the grounds of respecting vulnerable populations and asking the identities of participants. Qualitative is questioned on the grounds of not disrupting the sites and clearly articulating the purpose of the study. Because mixed method research incorporates both, each mixed method design will also have its own ethical issues to consider while conducting research. In the convergent design, the size of the qualitative and quantitative data sets may be different. However, smaller sample sizes cannot be minimized as a result. In the explanatory design, by linking the qualitative data to the previously collected quantitative data, there must be a clear link between the two. Further, some participants may not want their data released, and using names without permission is certainly an ethical issue. In an experimental design, by creating control group and, a, and an experimental group where only one group receives beneficial treatment can constitute an ethical issue. Moreover, collecting quantitative, qualitative information from the middle of a quantitative study may influence the overall results. In a social justice design, it is necessary to consider that the group being studied may be further marginalized by the study itself. In a multi-stage design, ethical issues arise when the needs of the participants are overlooked because of the existing literature surrounding the topic. Also, when a new stage is developed, it does not build on the stages prior. Remember, participants must give permission for every stage of a research project, sequence, or method used in the mixed method form of research. Let us move on now to discussing the steps taken in a mixed method study. Step one is to determine if the mixed method study is even feasible. This type of study requires the skills in gathering both, both sets of data, the time to collect such extensive information and working knowledge of the different types of designs. Finally, it's important to consider the audience. Will they appreciate the intricacies of your study? Step two is to identify the rationale for mixing methods. Why, more specifically, what is the intent? Is it to compare the two databases, to validate one database with another, or to gain a more complete understanding of the problem? If this is one of those reasons, you will be merging the two databases. However, other intents that would be sequential, other intents that would be sequential in design, so explanatory or exploratory, include to have one database explained by the other or to build one database to something new. Finally, it concerns with advanced designs. An intent would be to encase one database within a larger framework such as experimental theory or a long-term sustained line of inquiry. Step three is to identify a data collection strategy. What are the specific forms of data? With your quantitative data, it could be attendance records, or qualitative data could be pictures. What priority do you give to quantitative data and the qualitative data? And finally, unless you are collecting data co concurrently, what will be the sequence of your data collection? Step four is to develop your research questions. Depending on how, upon your study, these questions may be able to be formed before the study, but they may be formed throughout. If you are able, you should pose both quantitative and qualitative questions. Quantitative specify the relationship among independent and dependent variables, while qualitative are open-ended and non-directional in nature and seek to describe the phenomenon. In mixed methods, it is common to find exploratory questions and analytic variable questions. Finally, consider a mixed method question. Essentially, this type of question is to be answered by the mixed method research design being used. For example, in a convergent design, do the two databases converge and present consistent findings or di diverge and show contradictory findings? In an experimental design, how do the qualitative findings provide support and enhance understanding for the qualitative results? Step five is the most lengthy and rigorous as it is collecting all of your data, depending on the design of the study, will determine the sequence in which you need to collect data. To enhance your storage, management, and recording of data, heavily consider utilizing statistical programs and te text analysis programs.
Step six is analyzing your data. Again, depending on your design, will determine the process in which you analyze your data. You may need to view the quantitative and qualitative data separately. You would do this in an explanatory or exploratory designs or together as seen in a convergent design. The last stop is to write your report. Some variations include, if you're writing your report in two phases, the sections of data collection, analysis, and interpretation. Two phases, one qualitative and one quantitative, are used for each section. If each section you are integrating the quantitative and qualitative data, you will see through a mix of the two throughout your paper. This slide is a chart from page 559 in our book, which indicates the characteristics to look at look for when determining a mixed method study is of higher or lower quality. This form of rubric-like design could even be used to check your own research to ensure that the research is of the highest caliber. For instance, simply stating the research is indeed mixed methods and illustrating in detail the methodologies used, the sequencing, and the intent for both qualifies a study for a much higher quality research than others who do not. Overall, providing clarity, detail, and analysis for the rationale and the conclusions drawn through the analysis are pivotal to maintaining high quality status. In this video, Dr. Creswell conducts a research study and tests out a new video game. He utilizes journals, interviews, and a study to determine the popularity of the game. Watch the video and keep this question in mind. Based on the order he collects the data in the study, can you determine which methods, mixed methods design he's being used? Watch the video now. Thanks for watching.